Hello, I'm Kate Browning, and I'm going to talk about my artistic journey and my creative work. My art explores themes of self-awareness and inward reflection. Everything I'll be sharing has a main goal of creating an intimate connection with the viewer through their own thoughts and experiences. These faces are found all over the place in my sketchbooks and journals. It started as something I did to keep myself distracted from homework, but it grew into such a large focus in my artistic expression. And when I realized I was passionate about creating these faces, I began asking myself why. Looking back now, these faces hold so much more value than I would ever have realized, and they're the foundation for so much of my creative work. They're also why I started focusing on themes like individuality, the self, and personal reflection in the first place. One of my earliest bodies of work was this series of ceramic vessels. Each piece I made was meant to reflect a family member or a friend that I knew personally. I thought about its function, color, and design when connecting them to these people. It's important for me to address this series because it was one of my first ventures on my journey to connect my artwork to real identities on a more intimate level. In the spring of 2019, I took the introductory woods course at Iowa State. These pieces were my first ever creations in wood and my first attempt at branching out into mediums I was not comfortable with. Put Your Weight on Me, the wooden chair model with wire backing, was my first incorporation of my sketchbook faces into my professional coursework at all. And then my dovetail jointed box, called A Place for My Faces, was created to hold photos, receipts, tickets, or old rippings from past sketchbooks. It became a very personal piece about who I am, how I've changed as a person, and the places I'd been that led me to where I am today. Speaking of places I've been... I spent a lot of time in California that summer. My boyfriend Max and I drove up the coast from Carlsbad to Mendocino and back, and I took so many beautiful photos. I think the brilliant colors I saw on the road inspired a lot of my work to take a turn towards brighter, more saturated colors. One of my favorite things to do in California was going with Max and his family to throw tennis balls with their dogs at the bluff, which was a small cliff right by the Pacific Ocean. This place was so special to so many locals, but it was a shame that the city sold the land for construction of a beachside hotel and they closed the area to the public. To honor the great memories that I had there, I created this piece called Remnants of a Place. By combining multiple colors of embroidery floss into a single stitch, I attempted to recreate the identity of this place as I know it in my memories. These bright face patches were the predecessor of Remnants of a Place and were a personal exercise to gauge my ability to both embroider and incorporate my faces into yet another medium. As an entry-level photography project in the fall of 2019, I analyzed the way a specific place can have an entirely different identity to different people. This project focused on the dining table Max and I shared as a makeshift two-person desk. I learned that analysis of identity in art, whether it be of a place or a person, can be so multifaceted. This piece can not only inform an audience of the nature of the space, but also what the people are like who utilize this space, and also who I am as a person for even taking the time to focus on such a spot in the first place. Simultaneously, I began working towards improving my painting skills. This piece, which is a study of Fragonard's Blind Man's Buff, is laid out in a 3x3 three three grid where each rectangle studies different painting techniques among famous artists like Vincent van Gogh, Franz Marc, and Edouard Manet. This marker and ink series was created when I asked myself what my sketchbook faces would look like if I refined them. Despite their obviously loose nature, these faces were very distorted, and refining their features into these brightly colored contour drawings created an entirely different type of face. The following spring, I created this self-portrait ceramic bust, fully integrating myself into the world of the faces I'd created. In the creation process of this piece, I asked myself what the faces were to me and what I was to them. I'm only another person, but I'm also their creator, so... This piece very selfishly idolized myself as a god to the faces I've made. Within the same time frame, I created this piece, which was my first artistic endeavor that utilized faces to speak towards the viewer's personal interpretations, rather than having some clear-cut meaning to provide them with. 
Along with this piece, which I refer to as a window and a mirror, I ask, who do you see in the crowd? Why do you see who you do? And what memories do those faces invoke? What does all of that say about who you are as a person? Last summer, I got Procreate on my phone, and I began experimenting in heavily saturated sketches. This series is called Bottled Up, and it pairs a summary portrait with images of colorful bottles. I found artistic inspiration hard to come by as quarantine stretched longer and longer. In June, I created these faces called People in Color in response to the rise of the Black Lives Matter movement and the outrage over the death of George Floyd and so many others. I started looking at myself and asking why people of color were not appearing in my artwork. In October, after months of lacking artistic motivation, I created this series that I called Art Block, inspired by the things I was most passionate about being just out of my reach or through the window due to coronavirus. I layered photos I took in Chicago with doodles on my favorite mediums and creative processes. As I began to adapt to creating in an online and socially distanced setting, I began getting back in the groove of my creative process. I created these six tea sets, which I called Branches of the Family, and gave each cup, pot, or pitcher a unique shape and size while thinking about their place among their own set, and further, each set's place among the entire body of work. Returning to painting, this semester I created this diptych called Life Cycle as a way for me to process the growing stress of deadlines. Throughout college, I regularly feel like I'm juggling two mindsets, one where I'm overwhelmed and being pulled in a million different directions, and one where I'm at ease and content with myself and my progress. This spring, I began designing textile patterns and started thinking about the functionality of my faces in personal expression. My next step is to take them further and create wearable pieces that utilize patterns and can be available to whoever they resonate with. Thank you for taking the time to listen and learn about my creative endeavors. If you have any questions or you want to know more about my work, don't hesitate to reach out to me. Thank you so much.